My hero is a guy named Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt used to say, walk softly, talk softly, but carry a big stick. Senator Obama likes to talk loudly. In fact, he said he wants to announce that he's going to attack Pakistan. Remarkable. You know, if you are, if, if you are a country and you're trying to gain the support of another country, then you want to do everything you can that they would act in a cooperative fashion. When you announce that you're going to launch an attack into another country, it's pretty obvious that you have the effect that it had in Pakistan. It turns public opinion against us. Now let me just go back with you very briefly. We drove the Russians out with the, the Afghan freedom fighters, drove the Russians out of Afghanistan, and then we made his most serious mistake. We washed our hands of Afghanistan, the Taliban came back in, Al-Qaeda, and we then had the situation that required us to conduct the Afghan war. Now our relations with Pakistan are critical because the border areas are being used as safe havens by the Taliban and Al-Qaeda and other extremist organizations. And we have to get their support. Now General Petraeus had a strategy. The same strategy, varying, very different because of the conditions and the situation, but the same fundamental strategy that succeeded in Iraq, and that is to get the support of the people. We need to help the Pakistani government go into Waziristan, where I visited, a very rough country, and, and get the support of the people and get them to work with us and turn against the cruel Taliban and others, and, and by working and coordinating our efforts together, not threatening to attack them, but working with them, and where necessary, use force, but talk softly, but carry a big stick. Um, just, 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 a, just, just a quick follow-up on this. I, I think if we're going to have follow-ups, then I will want follow-ups. No, no, I know. Well. That was, so uh, well, I Spend think we'll get at me. it if I can with this question. Let's have one. All right, let's have a follow-up. Just, 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 just a quick follow-up because I think sure. I think this is important. I'm just a hired health <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> you're doing a great job, Tom. <laughs> Look, uh, I, I want to be very clear about what I said. Nobody called for the invasion of Pakistan. Senator McCain continues to repeat this. What I said was the same thing that the audience here today heard me say, which is if Pakistan is unable or unwilling to hunt down bin Laden and take him out, then we should. Now, that, I think, has to be our policy because they are threatening to kill more Americans. Now, Senator McCain suggests that somehow, you know, I'm green behind the ears and you know, I'm just spouting off, and he's somber and responsible. I, Thank Senator, you very much. <laughs> Senator McCain, this is the guy who sang Bomb, Bomb, Bomb Iran, who called for the annihilation of North Korea. That, I don't think, is an example of speaking softly. This is the person who, after we, had, we hadn't even finished Afghanistan, where he said, next up, Baghdad. So uh, I agree that we have to speak responsibly and we have to act responsibly and the reason Pakistan the, the popular uh, opinion of America had diminished in Pakistan was because we were supporting a dictator Musharraf had given him seven, uh, 10 billion dollars over seven years and he had suspended civil liberties we were not promoting democracy this is the kind of policies that ultimately end up undermining our ability to fight the war on terrorism and it will change when I'm president now, Tom, if, we, if we're going to go back and forth, I then I'd like to have equal time to go to respond. Yeah, to, you get to, uh, to, to last that. word here, and then I mean, we have to move on. Not true. Not true. I have obviously supported those efforts that the United States had to go in militarily, and I have opposed those that I didn't think so. I understand what it's like to send young Americans in harm's way. I say, I was joking with a veteran, I hate to even go into this, I was joking with an old veteran friend who joked with me about Iran. But the point is that I know how to handle these, these, these crises. And Senator Obama, by saying that he would attack Pakistan, look at the context of his words. I'll get Osama bin Laden, my friends, I'll get him. I know how to get him. I'll get him no matter what. And I know how to do it. But I'm not going to telegraph my punches which is what Senator Obama did. And I'm going to act responsibly as I have acted responsibly throughout my military career. 
and throughout my career in the United States Senate. And we have fundamental disagreements about the use of military power and how you do it. And you just saw it in response to previous questions. Can I get a quick response from the two of you about developments in Afghanistan this week? The senior British military commander who is now leaving after a second tour and their senior diplomatic presence there, uh, Sherrod Cooper Coles, who is well known as an expert in the area, both have said that we're failing in Afghanistan the commander said, we cannot win there. We've got to get it down to a low-level insurgency. Let the Afghans take it over. Cooper Cole said, what we need is an acceptable dictator. If either of you becomes president, as one of you will, how do you reorganize Afghanistan's strategy, or do you? Briefly, if you can. I'll be very brief. Uh, we are going to have to make the Iraqi government start taking more responsibility withdraw our troops in a responsible way over time because we're going to have to put some additional troops in Afghanistan. General McKiernan, the, the uh, commander in Afghanistan right now, is desperate for more help because our bases and outposts are now targets for more aggressive Afghan or uh, Taliban offenses. We're also going to have to work with the Karzai government, and when I met with President Karzai, I was very clear that you are going to have to do better by your people in order for us to gain the popular support that's necessary. I don't think he has to be a dictator. We, we want a democracy in Afghanistan, but we have to have a government that is responsive to the Afghan people, and frankly, it's just not responsive right now. Senator McCain, briefly. General Petraeus has just taken over a position of responsibility where he has the command and will uh, really set the tone for the strategy and tactics that are using. I've had conversations with him. It is the same overall strategy. Of course, we have to do some things tactically, some of which Senator Obama is, is correct on. We have to double the size of the Afghan army. We have to have a streamlined NATO command structure. We have to do a lot of things. We have to work much more closely with the Pakistani. But most importantly, we have to have the same strategy, which Senator Obama said wouldn't work, couldn't work, still fails to admit that he was wrong about Iraq. He will still will not admit that he was wrong about the strategy of the surge in Iraq. And and that's the same kind of strategy of go out and secure and hold and allow people to live normal lives. And once they feel secure, then they lead normal social, economic, political lives. The same thing that's happening in Iraq today. So I have confidence that General Petraeus, working with the Pakistanis, working with the Afghans, doing the same job that he did in Iraq, will again, we will succeed and we will bring our troops home with honor and victory, and not in defeat. Uh, Senator McCain, this question is for you from the Internet. It's from Alden in Hewitt, Texas. How can we apply ru pressure to Russia for humanitarian issues in an effective manner without starting another Cold War? First of all, I say I don't think that we're not going to have another Cold War uh, with, with Russia. But have no doubt that Russia's behavior is certainly outside the norms of behavior that we would expect for nations which are very wealthy as Russia has become because of their petrodollars. Now, long ago, I warned about Vladimir Putin. I said I looked into his eyes and saw three letters, a K, a G, and a B. He has surrounded himself with former KGB apparatchiks. He has gradually repressed most of the liberties that we would expect for nations to observe, and he has exhibited most aggressive behavior, obviously in Georgia, said before, watch Ukraine. Ukraine right now is in the sights of Vladimir Putin, those that want to reassemble the old Soviet Union. We've got to show moral support for Georgia. We've got to show moral support for Ukraine. We've got to advocate for their membership in NATO. We have to make the Russians understand that there are penalties for this kind of behavior, this kind of naked aggression into Georgia, a tiny country and a tiny tiny democracy. And so, of course, we want to bring international pressures to bear on Russia in hopes that that will modify and eventually change their behavior. Now, the G8 is one of those, but there are many others. But the Russians must understand that these kinds of, uh, of actions and activities are not acceptable and hope 